Hello again, and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. Thank you for tuning in. Um, it's miserable out there today. <laughs> Just going to say that. Um, cold, wet True day. True story. Not yeah. good. Mm -mm. Apparently, it's supposed to snow this afternoon. But it's no It's dark at 4 o'clock in the no. afternoon. It's this... Honestly, November is my least favorite month. Um, in, in yeah, because like Manchester. at least in March when it's equally miserable, you have spring to look forward to. <laughs> well, see, April and November are my least favorites. Yeah, because they're yeah. wet and gray. They're, and they're cold. wet and gray. Well, and see, gross I usually like cold. April. Well, not necessarily. I was gonna say well, I like April because well, yes. I tend to go on vacation. But yes, and also you're right. Spring is coming. At least you can be like, I gotta just get through Hon a couple more weeks. Honestly, though, I do love winter. I don't mind winter. I mean, I was I, in fact I would talk. I don't do the snow blowing or any of that stuff. So you know, I don't mind winter. <laughs> Fair um, enough. No, I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I don't. Well, I don't like Dan having to be outside moving snow. Well, he works from home, so it's a, we do have, you, you guys know what that's like. It's, you do have a little bit of advantage. You don't have to get out the door at six o'clock in the morning. Right. You don't have to get up an extra hour early. Yep. You can do it at lunch. I'm, yeah. It's a pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Um, so, post-election, post -election, huh? Post-election. Um, so, last Tuesday was election day, obviously. Um, Joyce Craig won her re-election, uh, 57-43, which, um, Victoria still beat Ray Buckley's estimates. Ray Buckley didn't think she'd make it to 40. Oh, really? Yeah. And considering Joyce... I had, think she actually did really I well, think she considering did really, really well. first um, time out. Yes. There's a lot to, lot of things to um, to think about when you're running for office. Um, she uh, Victoria did... Um, did consistently well in a lot of... You know, in a lot of the wards... Um, Joyce had like four hundred thousand dollars to spend because she had money from and boots on the ground from all these presidential campaigns, and Victoria was you know somebody who wasn't well known, um, with limited um, financial, you know yeah limited money. I think. It was I mean, like I 60 find groups. it kind of interesting. You know, people always talk about you know one of the divides between Republicans and Democrats being that you know Republicans are the big money capitalists. Yeah. I don't know blah. where they get that from. But when you actually look at things, like it's I, usually you know, just the opposite. In, in my Senate race last time, I had twenty twenty five thousand right. to spend, and Lou had almost five hundred thousand. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, wait a minute. So how does right. this work again? Right. You know, because for the most part, I would say you know my base at least is. Is, you know taxpayers <laughs> right right and it is weird and there's yeah. this weird i mean it doesn't i'm not I'm not trying to pit like you know one economic group of people i don't care how much money people have but you know the north end of manchester where the more affluent people tend to live tend to be more democrats so you know the blue collar folks the people that victoria was definitely resonating with uh, the people who just get up and go to work every day and live their lives and pay their mortgage and don't want their taxes and, you know, $200 a year is a big deal to them. Um, and I, I did notice this, uh, in, uh, I don't think the numbers have come out from Manchester yet, but I know Nashua's tax rate has gone up. Yep. Um, Londonderry, I believe, Londonderry, went up significantly. But Londonderry, I was reading an article about that. Londonderry's taxes went up because of their assessments, not the rate. The rate, their their actual rate, you know, that they're charging didn't go up, but the state of New Hampshire said they were under Valued. assessed so, so they and like um kevin smith who's the town manager down there he said maybe they need to start going to a two-year reevaluation instead of five years so that if there is a flux it do doesn't hit all at once i also sort of question whether we're doing property taxes i don't right like way. it i always say it should be square footage it shouldn't be based on some so I don't. It's not it, completely uh, arbitrary, but it is kind of an arbitrary but it's also value, like, right? And it's sort it of like if, if we're if we're uh, punishing. So we know that taxes basically uh, punish certain behaviors yes. are supposed to, right? Or at least that's the argument when people talk about vice taxes yeah, yeah. or cigarette taxes. But that means or, we're you know, punishing people from improving their properties, right? And and so it's a perverse incentive yeah. and also we want to be creating an economic climate where people do better and better right, right? so you don't want to be like oh like if, if you do we're better, all we're doing make... better right. we're all going to take more of yeah. your money yeah. so i i don't like the way we tax i don't like the way we come up with this valuation it is it's very it can fluctuate um you're it, punished if you're i mean really you're punished if people in your neighborhood have nicer homes because your value goes up, even if 
Nothing well, changed. Well, I mean, that depends, right? Well, so, the, so the golden rule is buy the, the crappiest the, yeah, house in right. the best neighborhood. Well, I bought the, the nicest house but in the crappiest neighborhood. But that's for buying and selling. That's not for taxes. Right. Yeah. Taxes are supposed to be paying for services. So why are they predicated on how much your neighbor's house sold for? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I want um, my neighbor's houses to sell for more so that when I sell my house someday, I mean, it maybe sells for we more. should start coming up with like bold proposals, yeah. right? Because I feel like there's a lot of times, and, and this is certainly something I'm working on in my own life, where I'm like, I feel like I'm criticizing a lot of without things a, yeah. without, you know, just being like, yeah. well, here's a proposal. This is how I would do yep. it, you know? So maybe we yeah, start we to do. say we need to be taxing real estate um, differently. So it will be interesting to see what our tax rate comes out at because they overrode the cap. Yes, they did. But speaking of the cap, <laughs> so, you know, on election night, just like going into elections, there's a lot of people who say, this is the most important election of our lifetime. And it's it actually, never it never is. is. <laughs> um, the next election will be the most important election of our lifetime. That's just the way people get caught up. And people who helped the losing candidate are like, some people just take it way too over the edge and this one gentleman who had been helping Victoria and he's a great volunteer and everything. He looked at me deadpan serious and said, well, this is the end of our party. Oh, and I was like, what? Yeah, literally like what? And he goes, well, she lost that. That's it for the Republican party. And I thought, oh yeah, you, you're too invested. And I mean, and I, the, well, you know, I actually think that's kind of telling about people. I saw a lot of that, I think, back in 2008 with the first Ron Paul yeah. presidential run. And and then, you know, after that, we had the Tea Party. Yeah. So in 2012, there was also way more momentum and more people and all of that. But I was just surprised when people would say they're, they're like, like the, the got, level of devastation. Because I'm just like, well, I mean, honestly, did, did, <laughs> it's too... Yeah, that's too much. I mean, I mean, what people have to understand is the vested interests, the money behind the system and the corruption and the cronyism that we have now. These people are going to cling with all their fingers to this influence and power and yeah, that they have. And so it's it's not easy to you know, walk a path of principle no, no. and to say, you know, um, these are the important things and to stick to them. So and it's going to take years of education. So right. we just need to remember, we just need to keep building. Right. And um, I, sometimes I feel like because I've been doing this for decades, that maybe I've, you know, you start to wonder if maybe you come, become a little too thick skinned or something. And I don't think that I, then I remind myself that that's not the case and I'm just keeping it balanced. Right. Um, so I'm at Victoria's victory party or, you know, whatever you want to call election night party. And um, a lot of great people there, you know, obviously people not happy with Victoria's laws. Um, but very shortly in the room, um, somebody came up to me and said that um, we were asking, you know, you're always like, so did so-and-so win, did so-and-so win. Um, somebody came up and told me that Ross Terrio had won the alderman seat in Ward 4. And like the switch in my head went from stop focusing on the light, the race we didn't win and what did we walk away with. Right. And um, Manchester taxpayers definitely won on Tuesday. Um, Joe Lavasser, Keith Hirschman, and Elizabeth Moreau, who were incumbents, won their re-election. Um, and for those of you who don't know, the tax cap and the spending cap, in order to override that, you need um, 10 votes, yes. 10 of 14. So we only had three going in, four if you, with John Cataldo. So we didn't have that. They had the 10 to override. Right. So um, with Ross Terrio winning, I knew we were at, we had maintained. Um, then I learned that Michael Porter won the seat in Ward 8 which put us at, put, dropped them to nine, which means they did not have a vote. And then I learned that Jim Roy took out Chris Herbert. Oh. So they're down to eight. Nice. So the pro spend all your money, you know, override the cap folks um, are down to eight out of 14, which means they'd have to sway two to be able to override the tax cap. So for the next two years, spending should be somewhat in control. Which is good. I mean, that's a win. I actually, months ago, if anybody actually remembers, if I had written down notes, 
I said I would I would have considered the election a win if we picked up two aldermen. Right. And we picked up two aldermen. So and people, that's and the that's good thing is Mike Porter and Jim Roy are both undeclared um voters. They're not registered with a specific party. Jim Roy's a former d- Democrat, um, former firefighter. I mean, he he's what what makes you think that he would tow the says, tax cap he says he will so do all of them no though. i know but i actually <laughs> believe him and he um he's pretty upfront. i like i like him because he's kind of um he's very blunt, matter of fact like, yes like we are matter and of fact. That's we a had a nice conversation and um yeah i don't think he has any interest in in first of all i don't think he has any interest in being among the other ones I hate to say that, but that's the truth. Um, he ran against Chris Herbert because for... You know, I, I mean, you know, I Chris think, was the one who wanted to throw the old people out yeah, of their Yeah, so home, if we could just so throw them out of the state great. house this coming year, it would be awesome. Um, so the school board to, um, for Republicans took a hit. Jimmy LaHoo lost. Um, I forget. Somebody else lost. Mm, Lisa okay. Freeman. Yeah. Lisa Freeman, Jimmy LaHoo lost. Uh, Joe LaChance took Rich Gerard's seat. Oh, so that's okay. good. That's so we great. maintain that. Um so that's a little tricky, but ultimately the aldermen, which we now have six, um, make the decisions on the budget. Right. So Well and then of course, um so yeah. I know everyone is sitting there in in anticipation. I lost the <laughs> My school charter commission, um, that was at 37 person uh, raise. Right. And uh, I mean, I would say the top vote getters yeah. were all the typical it's people names. you would expect. Uh, you know. Actually, the only one that kind of threw me, well, there's two. Looking at the winner. So these are the nine charter commissioners. Well, um, I don't even think we have to name them. I mean, I think I, the, ju- I think the, the ones that throw the ones that I found surprising were Mary Friedis and Joe LaChance for name recognition. I know what Mary Friedis' name is because I see the state rep lists. Right. And I know who Joe LaChance is, but I'm kind of surprised. I was very surprised. I mean, I, mean, I was else- surprised by Joe as well. I mean, here's the thing, right? We don't know if it's even going to go forward. I think no, on the plain reading it of the law, it it won't. I mean, I think the first judge got it right. For those yep. of you following along back home, uh, you know, there was an a injunction to say, hey, you guys didn't follow the way the law is written. So the filing periods are all wrong. We should stop this because this person yep. can't register. And then they took an, uh, a stay to the su- Supreme Court of yep. New Hampshire, who the same afternoon was like, eh, we don't really want to cancel an election. Right. So we're going to let it go forward. But then once the dust settles, we can just decide what really needs to right. happen. I think it would be, sh- I, I mean, I would be deeply shocked, but then again, who Nothing knows? Surprising. Nothing surprises me anymore if if the Supreme Court actually doesn't do away with the results because there I is do. there is I literally can't. no way you right. can read all the things and, and say that this I mean, they, they would have to say, we don't actually follow the law anymore, right. which they do um, they often don't, but for the courts to actually start to just explicitly yeah. say that would be pretty, a, a pretty dark day in our beautiful granite state. So yeah. I think all of this yeah, is going to go away. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the next. Um, I I thought about it this morning because I did I did talk to um, I have friends that are attorneys that know these things. Um, people who helped with the tax cap ten years ago. Um, and asked like if I was on the mark right <laughs> if my brain was following Tracking, a path yeah. that actually makes sense. And um, for the most part it is. And I, I now my question this morning was, so like when would we expect to hear I, further judicial review from, or does something have to happen to, to trigger the Supreme Court to do further judicial review? So I don't really know the answer to that. I, I'm not sure either. You know what I mean, I mean I does somebody have to file something and and I assume uh, you know whoever the plaintiff was, yeah. uh, Mark Warden, yeah. like you know whoever is like following up on that. So that'll be interesting yeah. to see. So we'll but... know, and we'll keep you guys up to date on what we hear. Um, so th- who knows what's going on with the Charter Commission? Um, charter is a word though, which you and I confuse ourselves. Charter, 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 charter. is everywhere. So last week, um, like the day after election, I think. Yeah. Um, no, a couple of days after. Okay, right? it was sometime. Yeah. Yeah. The um, Joint Legislative Committee up in Concord 
rejected a federal grant for, for forty-six million dollars that would go to charter improving and expanding in charter schools in New Hampshire. And the reasoning stated, yeah, "This was funny." Is um, well, come on, this federal grant comes with bells and whistles and things that we have to, you know, and comply strings. with, which strings, which uh, is literally the argument we make yeah. all right, the like, time. Right, like because Medicaid right? expansion didn't have any strings attached. None right? whatsoever. None of these things ever have mm. strings attached, and the Democrats never seem to be concerned about the strings. Oh, and that then are and then, so they never care about the strings attached. And I have yet to find a one-time money bucket that uh, they didn't love mm -hmm. except this one. So um, I personally find it extremely frustrating because this is the kind of partisan party politics that drives me nuts. <laughs> this money should be taken and it should be helped don't, help right. charter schools, which are public schools, by right. the way, according to like all the paperwork mm -hmm. and the Department of Education of New Hampshire. And um, we know one size does not fit all. So this right. creates this opportunity for children in different learning capacities and different ways of learning. So yep. this is either a stupidity, which I doubt, or it's spite, or it's pure evilness. Right, because if you look at charter schools, you know, like charter schools um, perform better. That's just, those are just facts. Those are just numbers. If you look at all the um, the public school numbers for New Hampshire and the charter school numbers for New Hampshire and reading and math and all these different, different grades, charter schools always do better, which is a good thing, I would think. Um, charter schools spend less, they, they, mm. get, they don't spend as much money per student, which from the taxpayer perspective is a good thing. Um, it also shows they what, tend what's to be, capable. They also what's... tend to... Um, a lot of the kids that go to the charter schools tend to be the ones who do need more specialized um, education. It's not like just rich parents are sending their kids to the charter schools. And I saw an article the other day about um, the waiting list. So like when, I forget which school it was, but when it opened, it had 72 students. Now it has 186 students and a waiting list of like 80 or 90 kids. So there are waiting lists to get into the handful of charter schools in New Hampshire. They're outperforming public schools. They spend less money. So naturally, we would want to not expand that right you with know, money from the federal government that's what kills me is like new hampshire traditionally just keeps sending money down to dc and we don't get it back so we so only let's reject the money that we finally can get back uh you know a lot of people are always surprised when they find this out but new hampshire is a net payer to the federal government which means yes. we are we fund other states uh, yeah we we give more money than we get back. Right. So we are basically getting screwed by the swamp right. on a daily basis. Right. And so the question is why, right? Right. And this was an opportunity to get to a little also, bit back. Well, not just to get something back, but to also try and create these opportunities, right? Right. So, you know, it seems like Democrats can understand my body, my choice, but they can't understand so my, my education, education, my, my choice. Right. So it's like, oh, we're only allowed to choose things when it suits a certain party instead of actually leaning into the idea that choice is a good thing because choice is freedom. Choice means that every person gets to decide what works for them That's right. instead of being a slave to the state and being told this is the one way yep. you're allowed to do things. It's crazy. So... Lou D'Alessandro. <laughs> Boo. Boo and Lou. Um, yeah. So that's it. Um, so I wonder what's going to happen with that because so what happened was the money was tabled. So yeah, I'm it's not... tabled. So they could pull it off. They could pull, they tabled accepting the money. So I think if there's enough um, public Outcry, pushback, yeah. um, that committee will be... Um, hopefully pressured to take it back off the table and accept the money. It's just crazy because... I mean, it just pretty much just reflects crazy. really poorly because I think at this stage, it's 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 very it, hard for me to see them making any kind of plausible argument. argument. So it's insulting because the arguments they came up with is utter BS well, and, and based also on their own right, track record. They don't do the things that they're saying are the reasons they don't want to do this. Right. Because this is about education and because I'm sorry, reality is in my life. The Democrats, those on the left, are not there for the children. They are there for the unions. I don't care. Call me a bad guy. Call me anti-union. I'm actually not anti-union. But when the legislators 
are more concerned about the unions and the employees than they are about the children, that's when we have a real big problem with our education system. And yeah, and and we've got to figure something out. Throwing more money, we know more doesn't money work. doesn't get you better outcomes. So we have to well, really and start Lou's, to be Lou's willing comment to comment was something like, well, why are we trying to compete with the public schools? Well, because they suck. Let's well, start with a lot of them suck. Some of them do, some of them are fine. The teachers might be great, but the process, the whole schools as a whole, are woefully still broken, I mean, and I don't see so, them being fixed. So fixed I forget so. when when that attack in the Keene school started. Was that we talked yeah. about? We that talked last about week? that. I think last week. Yes. So so uh, just very briefly. So there was a police officer uh, attacked a child from behind, tackled them, threw them to the ground. According to the union leader, the kid was bloodied and bruised. The dad was so scared that he was unwilling to give his name. I think all of these should be sort of red flags for all of us right. to wonder why we think certain behavior that if you did it would be assault, if a parent did it would be child abuse, right. if uh, this authorized person in a school does it, attack from behind, then that somehow is a uh, good use of force or right. allowable use of force, right? So they investigated themselves within a day <laughs> and found themselves, you know, uh, that, that it was justified use of force. So I think we should introduce a bill in the next session, and it should be called the the parity bill that says if if the state finds me um, guilt, you know, or charges me with something or says that wasn't acceptable, then I'm going to investigate myself. Right. And, I and get then to I get to decide by myself in secret whether I think I should be guilty or something right. or not. Because that would be crazy. And if that sounds crazy to you back home, then, I would like you to explain to me why, why that? that is acceptable behavior for one group of people, the only ones who have a monopoly on force, the only people who are allowed to hurt you and get away with it. So that's my rant for today, folks. Well, there you go. Um, before we run out of time, because it is November and we're post-election and it is starting to be like winter and Thanksgiving's coming and then that means Christmas is coming. So I saw the Christmas stuff no. already okay. in the store. There was Christmas stuff before Halloween. Oh no. It wow. was bad. Um, but I want I like to at this time of year talk about some of the things coming up. Um, I'll just only do November stuff for now. Um, on November 23rd, which I think is the... Week. Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend. No, no it's the so, one before. So Thanksgiving is super late this year. Well, I think birthday, it's on the my 29th. Birth, okay, uh, yeah. maybe 28th because okay. my birthday is on Saturday. So that and it yeah. rarely is okay. near Thanksgiving. Okay, I, I, so I a week up, before Thanksgiving, late. the weekend before, um, at the Currier Museum of Art, they're having Shaker Day on November 21st or 23rd from 10 to 4. Um, they've got art talks and exhibitions and all sorts of stuff. And that is uh, $13 for adults, $10 for seniors, $5 for teens, free for members. And people should always remember with the courier, if you just want to go have coffee, I'm a member there and yeah. I love it. I do lots yeah. of meetings there and stuff. But uh, they have a wonderful cafe. You can cafe. go that cafe. If you just want to pop in, there's parking. Yep. The cafe is open until 3.30, yep. I believe. It's yummy. And you don't have to pay the entrance fee if you're not a member you can just shoot straight in yep. say i'm just going for a coffee meet some yep. people there it's awesome it's really really good and people should um, do it because and they it's do it's already space. passed for um november but the second saturday of the month if you get there between 10 and noon and you're a new hampshire resident you get into the museum for free you don't get into any special exhibits but you still can get into the the museum for free that's their free second sunday um or second saturday um, so that's happening at the Courier on the 23rd. Also on the 23rd at the Spotlight Room, which is part of the Palace Theater Group, um, which is located at 96 Hanover Street, so on the same street as the Palace. Um, on Saturday, November 23rd at 7 p.m., they have the Eric Mintel Quartet doing a Charlie Brown Jazz Christmas. Oh. And I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> Tickets are $29. Um, also coming up later Do in November. Do they keep November. pulling the oboe away know. from someone? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, also, coming up soon um, at the Palace Theater itself, you'll have the Nutcracker and a Christmas Carol. Dan and I try to get down and see the Christmas Carol every year. You can get more information about the Courier at courier.org and at the Palace Theater at palacetheater.org. Um, holiday Parade is on somewhere in this pile is on Saturday, December 7th at 4 p.m. That happens on Elm Street. Um, and the downtown market starts also at the beginning of December. That's a great place to get little crafty stuff and whatnot. Um, but I like to, you know, get things out there 
um, about what's coming up so people can enjoy not only the holidays, but things to do throughout the winter right. so that, you know, we can and pass the months before it turns into spring again. And it is, you know, it's important to actually just get out there and because see it's... things. We have so many wonderful things in Manchester and sometimes they pass. I, nothing makes me more crazy than when I read about something in the newspaper that said yesterday there was this wonderful thing in Manchester. And I'm like, well, if I had known that, we would have done it. <laughs> so um, I think that's all we got. I think so. Stay warm, stay dry. Um, if you have any events coming up and you want us to include them in future shows, send them to manchtalk at gmail.com. Um, thanks for tuning in. If I can see that some people were over there on the, the live <laughs> thing. Thank you for watching, and we'll see thanks, you next guys. week. Take care. Bye.